leaders, I am excited about this new unit we're getting ready to start in Sunday school. It's called Distinct, Living Above the Norm, and all six weeks we'll be looking in Matthew chapter 5. This first week we'll be looking at Distinct in My Character. It's, it's from the first 12 verses of Matthew chapter 5. Now Matthew 5 is the first chapter in the three chapters which is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount. Now, most people are concerned about their reputation. And of course, a reputation is how people perceive them. What we really should be concerned about is our character. That is, how we are, what we do when nobody sees us, what God sees. That reminds me of 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, that says, Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So we should be more concerned about our character, which will influence our reputation. These 12 verses that we're looking at this week in Matthew chapter 5 are commonly known as the Beatitudes. And they're called that because they come from a Latin term which is spelled and almost pronounced exactly the same way. And that Latin term means happiness. And so in some translations, instead of saying blessed or blessed is the man who, it would say happy is the one who. Happy is the man who does these things. I think a better way to remember what a beatitude is, is that beatitudes deal with our being, B-E, the being, and it also deals with our attitude. So we notice in the first couple of verses that Jesus goes up on the mountainside and he sits down to teach. And you'd think that a person in authority would stand to teach, but it was common in that society for someone when they taught to sit down. That was the, the, the sign of authority. If you remember when Jesus took the scroll and he read from the book of Isaiah. He, he stood and he read from it, and then he sat down to teach. So that was just a common thing to do. Now here's what I want you to do for the next minute or so. Stay with me, follow me, because I'm going to say some statements that don't seem quite related, but they really are. They'll come together, hopefully, here in a minute. When was this in Jesus' ministry? Well, it was early on in his ministry. Also, who was the primary audience when Matthew wrote this gospel. The primary audience for the book of Matthew was Jewish Christians. Now what did the Jews think that the Messiah was going to do for them when he, when he came? Jews thought the Messiah was going to come to free them from Roman captivity, to be a king in the literal sense, have an earthly throne, and restore Israel to, their, to, uh, to its former glory. Here's another thought. When is the best time to set the expectation for a new employee? Is it uh, six months into the job, uh, maybe when he's getting a review and the, the, the employer says, well, you're not living up to expectations, uh, and the employee says, no, I have no idea what the expectations are? No. The best time to set those expectations, of course, is in the interview or at least early on, the first few days into the process. So here's what Jesus is going to do here early in his ministry. He's got these new disciples, kind of like the new employees. He's going to set those expectations of what is required of them So it's into this context, it's into this set of expectations that Jesus opens his mouth on the side of the hill and begins what's known as the Sermon on the Mount. He's going to overturn their expectations by saying, you're blessed if you are poor in spirit, if you mourn, if you're meek, if you show mercy. So Jesus sets the expectation beyond anything that the disciples could have imagined. Uh, He didn't say... You're going to have power and authority to rule kingdoms. What he did is he described what the character of a citizen of heaven would be like. You see, these things he said, they're not about doing. They're about being. They're, a, they're not about actions. They're about character. It's about the heart. And wasn't that one of Jesus' main points when, in several of his teachings? You know, Later on he says it's not just about murder. It's about hatred. Because hatred is where it starts and it leads to murder. It's the attitude in the heart that leads to the action of murder. The same thing with uh, adultery. Yes, adultery is wrong, but that's that's not just it. It starts with lust. So don't lust because the lust, the inside the heart, the, uh, the attitude leads to the action. So in the Beatitudes, Jesus shows us two different things. He shows us, first of all, where character takes root. Those four verses, those four statements, uh, verses 3 through 6, talks about that vertical relationship, how we're to interact with God. Then he also talks about 
how our character bears fruit in the last four verses. Uh, those four statements, 7, 8, 9, and 10, talks about our horizontal relationship, how we interact and deal with other people. You see, when you get the vertical right, when you get that relationship with God right, it's not 100% easy, but it's easier to maintain and to get those relationships right on the horizontal level. If you remember Jesus, when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And in Matthew 22, he said, love God, that's our vertical and love others. That's our horizontal relationship. Even going back to the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments deal with our relationship with God. The last six deal with our relationship with other people. So here are just some things for you to think about, to, to process, uh, as you process this lesson in preparation for your teaching. Now, your teacher's book, of course, is an excellent resource for commentary on, on the verses, so please read that thoroughly and make some notes. Uh, I'd like for you to encourage your class to read through Matthew 5 at least once a week, if not several times a week, if not every day, and do that in different translations and let the message of what Jesus is teaching, let that permeate their hearts, let that permeate their lives, and then as, as you teach, as you go through each lesson, they're already familiar a little bit more with the material and they'll just be reinforcing what they've already been reading. So that's all I have for you today. I hope to see you Sunday.